informs us that something big is about to happen to the Bates family at number 17 Cherry Tree Lane. Jane and Michael are constantly misbehaving, and Katie Nana, the latest in a long line of nannies, has had enough. She leaves, and George Banks asks his wife, Winifred, to place an advertisement in the newspaper for a new nanny. But the children decide to write their own advertisement. Mary Poppins arrives, and she fits the children's requirements exactly. Winds in the east, there's a mist coming in, like something is brewing and bad to begin. Can't put my finger on what lies in store, but I feel what's to happen, all happened before. A father, a mother, a daughter, a son, the threads of their lives are all raveling undone. Something is needed to twist them as tight as a string you might use when you're flying a kite. Chim chim and e chim chim, cherry chim chim. Good riddance then. Katie Nana! Gone, are you quite Gone sure? Gone, is it any wonder? Choosing the right nanny, I keep drawing blanks. Do you really think I made another blunder? What on earth am I to say to Mr. Banks? George, dear, I'm feeling so bereft, dear. Another nanny's left, dear. Every nanny goes I suppose we are never going to find the perfect nanny. Nonsense! Precision and order, that's all that I ask. The running of a household, a straightforward task. The children, the servants, they're all your domain. Whilst I remain the sovereign of Cherry Tree Lane. Coat. Coming, sir. The simple truth is you've engaged six nannies over the last four months and they've all been unqualified disasters. A nanny should govern, a nanny should rule. A nanny is a paragon who suffers no fool. A nanny's a stalwart our children would gain by having such a nanny in Cherry Tree Lane. Of course, George, but... So take control of situations. Show your authority when interviewing staff. You know your role. They know their stations. Efficiency and forethought cut the jobs in half. Briefcase. I thought Katie Nana would be firm with the children. She always looks so cross. Winifred, never confuse efficiency with a liver complaint. Clear thinking, sound judgment. That's how to advance. If then things will run, run like clockwork, clockwork, leave nothing to chance. When nannies go missing, the answer is plain. Our children must be monsters. Oh, how can they be monsters? In, in cherry, cherry tree, tree lane. lane. Umbrella. Oh, if only we could find someone like your old nanny. I'm afraid that's not realistic, my dear. Few women alive could manage Miss Andrew's standards of efficiency. Besides, we could never afford someone of her caliber. Precision and order, he wants nothing less. It's like an army barrack. Yes, and we're in the mess. No wonder the nannies are driven insane. We're living in a madhouse in Cherry Tree Lane. Now. Place an advertisement in the Times stating that Jane and Michael Banks require the best possible nanny at the lowest possible wage. Father, we've written our own advertisement. What? Oh, please, George. I think we should hear it. Uh, Wanted a nanny for two adorable children. Adorable? Well, that's debatable, I must say. If you want this choice position, have a cheery disposition Rosy cheeks 
no warts. That's the part I put in. Play games, all sorts. You must be kind, you must be witty. Very sweet and fairly pretty. Of all the ridiculous oh, ideas. Oh, George, please. Take us on outings, give us treats. Sing songs, bring sweets. Never be cross or cruel. Never feed us castor oil or gruel. Love us as a son and daughter. And never smell of barley water. I put that bit in too. If you won't scold and dominate us, we will never give you cause to hate us. We won't hide your spectacles so you can't see. Put dough in your bed <laughs> or bed. Hurry, Nanny, many thanks, sincerely, Jane and Michael, thanks. That is quite enough Tommy Rot for one day. Would you please go upstairs and let me get to work? Oh, I might have guessed. The wind is blowing, and it's an easterly, it's bound to bring a chill. I'm underdressed. I must be going. Fetch my gloves and scarf or I'll be later still. Where's my hat? He's brushed it with boot polish. Precision and order. That's and all that, that I ask. ask. The running of the household, a straightforward task. The children, the servants, they're all your domain. Whilst I remain the sovereign, Mind you, use your day well. You remain the sovereign. I shall be home at six o'clock sharp. He remains the sovereign. On cherry tree Some minor improvements may not go amiss 
But at all times you must remember this You're practically perfect in every way I guarantee work of art. Bored with the park and wary of Bert's scrappy appearance, the children try to escape, but Mary urges them to see the magic in everyday life. Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jim Jiru, I does what I likes and I likes what I do. Hello, art lovers. Today I'm a screamer, and as you can see, a screamer's an artist of highest degree. And it's all me own work from my own memory. Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jim Jerood. I draws what I likes, and I likes what I drew. Do I ask of you? But me cap would be glad of a copper or two. Me cap would be glad of a copper or two. Spark, then something plain as a park becomes a wonderland. All you have to do is look anew. It's a jolly holiday with Mary. Mary makes your heart so light. Oh, really? When the day is grey and ordinary, Mary makes the sun shine bright. You do talk nonsense, Oh, bird. happiness is blooming all around us. The daffodils are smiling at the dark. I haven't the faintest idea of what you're talking When Mary holds your hand, you feel so grand. Your heart starts beating like a big brass band. You've got enough brass for all of us. Oh, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. No wonder that it's Mary that we love. Come along, you two. She seems 
so different, but I bet she's not. And I thought Mary Poppins would never let me get down from this blimp. Ain't it a glorious sight? Rise a morning in May. I feel like I could fly. Have you ever seen the grass so green? He's looking a bit timid today. No, why? I knew him when he was a little bolder. A little bolder? <laughs> to see a statue dance like that, you can't believe your eyes. You fear you've lost your marbles, but I think I think you're wise. So you should hasten, call a mason. Tell him what you've seen. If he knows his craft, you'll think you're daft, but we'll know what you mean. It's a jolly holiday with Mary. And I've my own hatch, why? Those gargoyles need a gargle, cause their throats get rather dry. And just between us, I know Venus has a vice that shocks. She often drinks with a sphinx who winks. It's neat and on the rocks. <laughs> Take a gentle job. It's, it's no wonder that it's Mary that we love. No wonder that it's Mary that we it's love. It's a jolly holiday with you, Bert. Gentlemen like you are few. No, you're just a diamond in the rough dirt. Underneath your blood is blue.
Jim, Jiminy, Jim, Jiminy, Jim, Jim, Jeroo. La dum, da da dum, da 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 dum. As Mary Poppins begins to win over the children, she receives news that there is something wrong with her Uncle Albert. Mary and the children rush to Uncle Albert's home to find that he is floating above their heads. Uncle Albert tends to float up into the air whenever he laughs too hard. Soon it's not just Uncle Albert floating, but Bert, Mary and the children. To laugh <laughs> loud and long and clear. I love to laugh. <laughs> it's getting worse every year. <laughs> the more I laugh, <laughs> the more I fill with glee. <laughs> and the more the glee, <laughs> the more I'm a merrier me. <laughs> It's embarrassing, <laughs> the more I'm a merrier me. <laughs> Not at all attractive to my way of thinking. Some laugh too fast. <laughs> Some only blast. Ah! Others, they twitter like birds. <laughs> you know, you're as bad as he is. Then there's a kind what can't make up their mind. <laughs> When things strike me as funny, I can't hide it inside and squeak, <laughs> as the squeakers do. <laughs> I got to let go with a ho, <laughs> and ah, <laughs> we love to laugh. <laughs> Loud and long and clear <laughs> We love to laugh <laughs> So everybody can hear The more you laugh The more you fill with me The more I'm a queen The more we're a merry <laughs> As the children arrive home, the household prepares for Mrs. Banks' party. But even with a dose of magic from Mary Poppins, no one shows up. Mrs. Banks is left feeling more lost than ever. George informs Winifred that they must maintain order and convention. Winifred feels that she is disappointing both her husband and children, and she struggles to understand her role within the family and within the world. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap. The job's a game, and every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake. A lark, a spree, it's very clear to see. 
that a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down the medicine go down medicine go down just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in the most delightful way oh my point exactly a robin feathering his nest has very little time to rest whilst gathering his bits of twine and in his pursuit he has a merry tune to toot he knows a song will move the job along for a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down the medicine go down medicine go down just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in the most delightful And stern. With boys and girls, you don't befriend them. I fear that Mary Poppins has a lot to learn. Precision and order, a credo for life. It's always been a comfort for me and my wife. Yet now in our midst there's... Well, I can't explain, but something is unsettling in Cherry Tree Lane. Being Mrs. Banks should be an easy road, and yet it's one which I don't seem too good at on the whole. I have a comfy home, I have a simple life, I have a name which tells the world I'm someone else's wife. Being Mrs. Banks, what does that entail? Facing tests of character, I always seem to fail. And as for his best people, well, I'd like to say no thanks. They're not exactly my idea of being Mrs. Bond. Just one day, when Mary 
holds your hand, you feel so grand. Your heart starts beating like a big brass band. Do look, Nelius is beaming. Mary Poppins takes Jane and Michael on a trip to visit their father at the bank where he works. There, George has a choice. To give a loan to Herr von Hussler, a businessman with a dubious money-making scheme, or to John Northbrook, who presents a solid plan for a factory that would help many, but offers little collateral. An innocent question from Jane prompts George to remember the ideals and values he once had. He decides to take a chance on Mr. Northbrook and gives him the loan. On the way home from the bank, the children and Mary Poppins run into the bird woman who is feeding the birds in front of St. Paul's Cathedral. Jane is still worried about outer appearances and shuns her. But Michael gives the bad woman money. Tops, 
men have dreams of power and position. And it's our job to back them to the hilt. For shrewd investment and advice, they'll pay our price. The bedrock of this fence are built. Hey, Banks, what objections can you have? My securities are more than adequate when Latin America is an expanding market. What's the matter? Have you no courage? But, Mr. Von Hustler, what I haven't been able to grasp is what exactly is your final product? What do you think? Money, of course. A man has dreams of building an empire to make his name in many distant lands. And it's a new world, I am told, will soon strike gold, will seize a chance with both our hands. Assessing the market, limit the risk, lead to the border of business, business. Have you come to your decision, Mr. Banks? There's a town of good people whose future depends on you. I know that. Give us this chance. You won't regret it. The factory could be running in weeks. My men have dreams to earn an honest living. A wife and kids, a home to call their own. If you'd invest in us today, it paves the way. I promise we'd repay the law. I'm sorry, Mr. Northbrook, but what on earth are you doing here? Can't you see I'm busy? No, we're done. Daddy, when you invest the bank's money, what are you looking for? A good man or a good idea? Oh, I suppose I should say a good idea, but a good man is much rarer and much more valuable. Come along, children. Mr. Von Hustler, I have considered your arguments, and I'm afraid my answer is no. So, you don't recognize a good idea? Perhaps not, but I recognize a good man when I see one. You will regret this, Herr Banks. A man with dreams that life hasn't broken. A man with hopes, ambitions to fulfill. A man you're certain at first glance deserves a chance. Now, Mr. Northbrook, when exactly could your new factory open? Don't be blowing me up, I ain't getting up. If it ain't about the money, ain't no use of you ringing my line, stop wasting my time. If it ain't about the money, now nah, I can even hear what you say, I ain't finna do this. If it ain't about the money, you still can miss me with it.
Poppins, Jane, Michael and Bert meet Mrs. Corey, the mysterious owner of an unusual talking shop where people purchase words along with gingerbread. The children are surprised to hear that when their father was a boy, he came to the shop to enjoy its magic and spirit of invention. Things begin to go very wrong for George. Von Hustler goes to another bank and makes millions, and George is blamed for passing on the deal and is suspended without pay. In his stress, George yells at the children, and, in turn, an angry Michael and Jane fight over their toys, which magically come to life to teach them a lesson. Recognising the children are not yet ready for the lesson she has to teach them, Mary says goodbye to Bert, leaving a note that reads, Au revoir, or Till we meet again. Super Caliph, Fragile Istic, Expialid, Ocious. <laughs> That's not a word. Of course it's a word. And unless I'm very much mistaken, I think it's going to prove a rather useful one. When trying to express oneself, it's frankly quite absurd To leaf through lengthy lexicons to find the perfect word A little spontaneity keeps conversation keen You need to find a way to say precisely what you mean Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious I'm a little, little, little But it doesn't I'm mean anything I'm It can mean exactly what you want it to When Stone Age men were chatting, simply granting would suffice now if they'd heard this word, they might have used it once or twice. That's right. I'm sure Egyptian pharaohs would have grasped it in a jiff. Mm -hmm. Then every single pyramid would bear this hieroglyph. Oh, supercalifragilistic, expialidocious. Say it and wild animals would not seem so ferocious. Add some further flourishes, it's so no go 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 ha ha Could have carved it on their mighty monolith. Oh, yeah? The ancient Greeks, I'm certain, would have used it in their myths. I'm sure the Roman Empire only entered the abyss because those Latin scholars never had a word like this. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. If you say it softly, the effect can be hypnotious. Check your breath before you speak in case it's halitosis. Oh, but. Of course you can say it backwards, which is so we get a lie, sipsy gets a lagar and a creepus. She may be tricky, but she's bloody good. So when the cat has got your tongue, there's no need for dismay. Just summon up this word and then you've got a lot to say. Pick out those 18 consonants and 16 vowels as well And put them in an order which is very hard to spell
begin to go very wrong for George. Von Hustler goes to another bank and makes millions, and George is blamed for passing on the deal and is suspended without pay. In his stress, George yells at the children, and, in turn, an angry Michael and Jane fight over their toys, which magically come to life to teach them a lesson. Recognising the children are not yet ready for the lesson she has to teach them, Mary says goodbye to Bert, leaving a note that reads, Au revoir, or Till we meet again. I don't understand. I'm sure you don't, Jane. You and Michael think you have nothing to learn, but you don't understand the simplest things. Why are you all so big? <laughs> You'll find out. Children who lose their temper will lose everything else in the end. <laughs> Caught you at last Your quick temper went a bit fast This is a place of war This is a place where all wicked children go But this is our nursery No, this is our nursery Temper, temper, that was your crime We've been watching you for some time For the church. What church? All right. Temper, temper, silence in court. Is this not the story you thought? You have to stand on trial. You will not see your parents for quite some while. Children who refuse to learn will not return. Children who refuse to learn will not return. Are you Jane? And Michael Banks. Yes, and we live in 17 Cherry Tree Lane. Not anymore, you don't. You're a destined crossroads. You stand accused of the wanton loss of a most precious commodity, namely your temper. Call the first witness. Call the first witness. Temper, temper, think of the cost of a temper once it's been lost. Call the surprise witness! Call the surprise witness! Call the surprise witness! Surprise! Uh, yeah. I saw them, Your Honor. They were fighting over Valentine. Go on. And, and tore his arm! Oh. Again! Your verdict. You stand there bold as brass. You face the stiffest sentence this court can.
Where the smoke is all billowed and curled Between pavement and stars is the chimney sweep's world Where there's hardly no day nor hardly no night There's things half in shadows and half ways in light On the rooftops of London What a sight. Oh, you're a sweep now, are you? Best view in the world, eh? And who gets to see it? The birds, the stars, and the chimney sweeps. <laughs> Nothing to beat it, eh? Now, as the ladder of life has been strung, you may think a sweep's on the bottom most rung. Though I spends me time in the ashes and smoke In this old wide world, there's no happier bloke Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chiree A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chiroo Good luck to rub off when he shakes hands with you Or blow me a kiss But... And that's lucky too. Does this mean you're going? The wind's changed. Ah, but they're good kids, Mary. Could I be bothering with them if they weren't? But I can't help them if they won't let me, and no one is so hard to teach as a child who knows everything. So? So, they've got to do the next bit on their own. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chiree. When you're with a sweep, you're in glad. Goodbye, Bert. Chim, 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 chiri. When you're with a sweep, you in glad company. Nowhere is there a more happier crew than them's what sings chim, chim, chiri, chim, chiri. Chim, chimony, chim, chim, chiri, chim. Cheerio, Bert. Keep an eye on them for me. In the name of heaven are you two up to? Oh, where's Mary Poppins? She's gone. Gone? Well, if she doesn't have a heart of stone and no mistake. She left us a note. What does it say? Mrs Brill, what does au revoir mean? Why? Because that's what she's written on it. Dear Jane and Michael, keep playing the games. Au revoir, Mary Poppins. Well, I'm not up on these foreign tongues, but it's French, I know that. Now, let's see. Does it mean God bless you? Or is it good luck? Oh, no, I remember now. It means, till we meet again. Now, will you come on in before you catch your death? Liver oil, liberal doses of each. 
These are the tricks from which children recoil, the lessons I'm going to teach. Just follow my model and don't mollycoddle, it may lead the irksome to irk. So seek satisfaction from punitive action. Brimstone and treacle will work. Open. Don't taste as bad as it smells. Worse. Do I have to? Open. Uh. Brimstone and treacle and carbolic soap. These are the tools of my trade. With spoonfuls of sugar, you don't have a hope of seeing that changes are made. Where manners are chronic, my tincture's the tonic that's certain to wipe off a smirk. Just pour out a ration in maitre Brimstone and treacle will work. I won't stand for simpering, binging and whimpering. Sucking of thumbs is absurd. Observe every letter, for children are better when they can be seen and not heard. Your son will go to boarding school at once. As for the girl, I shall take charge of her myself. To cosset and pamper will hinder and hamper the child in whom bad habits lurk. First threaten to throttle, then uncork the bottle. Brimstone and treacle will Panic, the children escape the house and run to the park, where they meet Bert, who explains that the cure for every ill can be found at the end of a kite string. Their kite flies up into the London sky, and when it comes back down, Mary Poppins is with it. With tuppence for paper and strings, you can have your own set of wings. With your feet on the ground, you're a bird in flight. With your fist holding tight to the string of your kite. Oh, let's go fly a kite up to the highest height. Let's go fly a kite and send it soaring up through the atmosphere. Up Once you're lighter than air You can dance on the breeze over houses and trees With your fist holding tight To the string of your kite oh. been hiding from Miss Andrew. With her entire family missing, Winifred worries that she is to blame, but resolves to assert herself and fight harder for the people she loves. 
Mary returns home with the children and defeats Miss Andrew in an epic battle of wits and will. George returns, relieved to find that Miss Andrew has left, but still anxious about supporting his family. Winifred reminds him he can count on her and the children to stick by him. When you realize your worst fears have been realized And certainties now seem a bit less sure Ideals that at one time one idealized Now don't seem so ideal anymore Where once there was order, chaos has been loosed and home truths like chickens are coming home to roost. Illusions may shatter, but memories stay. The things that really matter I lost on the way. The sovereign, the master, and long may he reign The famous good for nothing Of Cherry Tree Lane George, dear, I know it hurts your pride, dear but you can't just run and hide, dear. Why can't you see that I'm here and I am on your side? Whenever you spoke of Miss Andrew, you showered the woman with praise. But now that I've met dear Miss Andrew, there are one or two things I'd rephrase. To think you were raised by that monster and carried that book. Day, the day that we first met Being Mrs. Banks Being kissed by you A man of dreams who made me feel That wishes could come true And now, although you're lost It's time that we closed ranks I'll fight for the man who needs From the cell. What kind of bird is it? A lark. You are seeing a lark in a cage for the first time and the last. My pleasure. Oh, don't mention it. So 
children. You've decided to come crawling back, have you? Well, I think we know what's needed now. Brimstone and treacle, my favorite liquor. That will make runaways stop. Impudent children respond so much quicker when forced to drink every last drop. Is this what you're looking for? Who are you? I'm Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins? But you left without notice. And I've come back without notice. I see. And what do you expect me to do? Pack. Pack! Silly little girl with your newfangled methods. I bring up children so they know their place. Standing for tradition, I govern my charges. Mishandled charges blow up in your face. I brought up their father. Well, that I don't doubt. You must be so proud of the way he turned out. A shining example, a pillar, a post. They all have their problems, but him more than most. <sighs> You've let my little lark out of his cage. Now you will bear the full brunt of my rage. Brimstone and treacle for you. Brimstone and treacle Just for you. Just a spoonful of sugar. Brimstone and treacle for you. Just a spoonful of sugar. Brimstone and treacle for you. Just a spoonful of sugar. the rooftops of London and into the Banks' house, wishing good luck to George and shaking his hand as they go. Brush away the dirt and soot. Brush away your tears. Cobwebs that aren't swept away.
miss a chance to get it right Don't it seem a perfect crime, don't it seem a shame When, when the steps aren't going as smoothly as they might George immediately. George fears the worst, but Bert reminds him that his family is more important than his ambitions. George leaves for the bank as Winifred wishes that she could go with him. Mary Poppins and the children encourage her to do what she believes is right. In front of the bank's board of directors, George launches into a defense of his actions before they can tell him that he was right all along. Van Hustler's scheme has fallen through and the competing bank that approved his loan has been ruined. Northbrook's business, on the other hand, is thriving and earning a healthy profit. Winifred shows up ready to defend her husband, but... When she finds the board is promoting him, she negotiates his raise for him. George announces that from now on, his family comes first. As George and Winifred walk along the streets of London, Mary Poppins takes Jane and Michael on one more magical adventure, this time through the heavens. 
I used to dream that when I grew up, I'd learn everything there was to know about the stars. It's funny, I haven't thought about all that in years. I'm not usually sentimental. Ah, it's good to look back sometimes. Is it? I'm not so sure. A man has dreams of walking with giants to carve his niche in the edifice of time. Before the mortar of his zeal has the chance to congeal, the cup is dashed from his lips, the flame is snuffed a borning, he's brought to rack and ruin in his prime. Life's a rum go, Governor, and that's the truth. Do you know what I think? It's Mary Poppins. From the moment she stepped into this house, things began to happen to me. Mary Poppins, eh? Yes, yes, of course. My world was calm, well-ordered, exemplary. Then came this person with chaos in her wake. And now my life's ambitions go in one fell blow. It's quite a bitter pill to take. It's that Poppins woman, she's responsible for all this. I know the very person. Here, what's that thing she's always saying? A spoonful of sugar, that is all it takes. It changes bread and water into tea and cakes. There, you see, that's exactly what I mean. Changing bread and water into tea and cakes, indeed. No wonder everything's coming unstrung around here. A spoonful of sugar goes a long, long way. So have yourself a healthy helping every day. A healthy helping of trouble, if you ask me. <laughs> like you say, Governor, you've got to grind, grind, grind at that grindstone. Though childhood slips like sand through a sieve. And all too soon they've up and grown And then they flow And it's too late for you to give Just that spoonful of sugar To help the medicine go down The medicine go down Medicine go down well, good luck, Governor. Thank you. Bert, and good luck to you too. happen if you let it sometimes things are difficult but you can bet it doesn't have to be so changes can be made you can move a mountain if you use a larger spade anything can happen it's a marvel you can be a butterfly or just say love or stretch your mind beyond fantastic dreams are made of strong elastic take some sound advice and don't forget it anything can happen if you let it i wonder anything can happen if you let it you won't know a challenge until you've met it No one does it for you No one but yourself Vacillating violets get left up on the shelf Anything can happen, just imagine That should be my epitaph I wear the badge in honour of this world's free thinker Those who see beyond 
their blinkers. Jelly isn't jelly till you've said it. Anything can happen if you let it. Anything can happen if you let it. What good is a whistle unless you wet it? Broaden your horizons. Open different doors. You may find a new there that you never knew was yours. Anything can happen. Raise the curtain. Things you thought impossible will soon seem certain. Bow at first, it might sound clownish. See the world more upside downish. Turn it on its head and pirouette it. If you reach for the stars, all you get are the stars. But we found a home you spin. If you reach for the heavens, you get the stars. Done, Mary Poppins says her goodbyes and flies off to her next task. Although the Banks family is sad to see her go, they are glad that they have finally found one another. With every job, when it's complete, there is a sense of bittersweet. That moment when you know the task is done Though in your heart you'd like to stay To help things on their way You've always known they must do There, practically perfect, and I hope it remains so.
Mary Poppins? Mary Poppins is gone. She's gone because we don't need her anymore. And other families will. I wonder if she's right, George. And we really could do without a nanny from now on. What do you think? I think you'd better come and dance with me. <laughs> George, this is serious. Wasn't that a shooting star? You can borrow my telescope. I was right. Wish on it, children. Winifred, my dearest love. We won't forget you, Mary Poppins. We'll never forget.